Hello, <laughs> this feels very odd. Um, it's Lucy Gossage here um, from my uh, kitchen uh, in England and um, I hope it's working and I've done a few weird things in triathlon. Um, this definitely feels one of the weirdest. Um, but Ironman have asked me uh, to talk a little bit about my plans for the year and um, uh, yeah, any questions that you guys have got, then um, just fire them over. Um, so I am a cancer doctor by trade. Um, I'm actually working three days a week at the moment in Nottingham as an oncologist. And um, I have got two top ten finishes in Kona. Um, I've won six Ironmans. Um, I'm not really the average pro. <laughs> I kind of fell into it as a drunken dare. Um, but yeah, my plans for the year are um, starting off with uh, Ironman Lanzarote. Um, I won that in 2014, I think. And I love the hilly races, the tough races. Um, so I'm doing that. And then I'm going to do the Grand UK Tour. <laughs> so anyone who's, um, who's seen me race in the UK knows how much I love racing um, in the UK. Um, so I, yeah, I'm really excited um, about having the chance to do a bit more racing locally. Um, so I'm going to start with Staffs, then do Ironman UK, and then Edinburgh, Dublin, and perhaps my favourite race, um, Ironman Wales. Uh, so yeah, that's my my season, and trying to fit in being a doctor on top of that, um, it's yeah, pretty crazy, but. Um, I do it because I love it, not really for any other reason. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, that's a bit of waffle. So I guess you've got some questions. Um, might be, it might take me a while to get them, actually. Um, but hopefully I can see some of them. Um, I can just see one up there from Patrick Alexander, which is your f favourite UK race. Um, that's a tricky one to answer, actually. Um I love Bolton because I've won there three times, um, but Ironman Wales is special. Um, it's so tough and the crowds in Bolton are amazing. Um, the crowds in Tembe are just unbelievable. Um, and yeah, when I won there in, I can't remember where, 2013, it was a complete surprise. So um, I would probably have to plump for Wales with Bolton a close second. Um, one from Ross Bullen. I too am doing Ironman Wales this year as my first full Ironman, only having done Staff 70.3 last year. So my question is, what advice can Lucy offer me for the bike leg? Whew, get some hills. <laughs> Course is known for its rolling hills and I anticipate a good seven and a half hour bike leg for me. That sounds like a lot of alone time with dark periods of doubt creeping in. How can I keep myself motivated and focused during those long pain flowers? Also any chance of a turn on the swim? Um, well, I'm not much good at swimming, so I don't think you want to tow from me. I think there's lots of better swimmers. Um, honestly, in an Ironman, I don't think you'll get bored. Um, I did my first one was in Ironman UK when it was in Sherbourne, and I chatted my whole way around, um, literally chatted my whole way around. And in fact, I met some of the people a few years down the line um, that that I did that race with and I you know I was on a, a road bike with tri bars and with no tri bars and it was yeah I was a complete novice complete chopper but um I wasn't bored at all um the support in Wales is amazing there are so many athletes around I don't, I don't think getting bored is going to be a problem um I think the most important thing is to not kill yourself on the first lap because there there is I'm like you say it's rolling they're not really rolling they're steep hills um killer hills some of them and um you'll see a lot of people going really hard on the first lap and then blowing up so um yeah go go kind of same speed on the hills as you are uh, the rest of the time and just enjoy the crowns you'll you'll love it i love it uh and give me a wave when i see you um another one this is it. <laughs> this is very weird um mark romans Hi Lucy, I'm doing Wales as my first full distance. How do you prepare yourself before race day to ensure you're 100% on Sunday morning? And how much food do you take on the bike? Uh, if I see you over the weekend, I'll say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, 
so before race day, I um, I think the main thing is try and get as much sleep as you can in race week. Um, I think I'm even going to book uh, an, an extra day off work that week to make sure that I get um, kind of recovered as much as I can beforehand. So sleep is the most important thing. Um, I always do some short, sharp sessions in race week. Um, and yeah, I, th I always have a complete rest day on the Friday if the race is on the Sunday. Um, and I kind of make sure that I don't have to set an alarm and try and spend the morning doing absolutely nothing, not even thinking about triathlon, like find a trashy film or whatever. Um, and then Saturday is always a busy day. Um, there's, you know, there's loads of faffing around getting racked and all your equipment ready and your nutrition ready. Um, so Saturday is quite busy. So taking the Friday and if you can take that Friday off work, I think it's well worth doing it. Um, and I always eat junk food the um, the day before, a couple of days before. I cut out fibre because um, it tends to <laughs> it tends to make me need to go to the loo on the run. So um, I literally I do what I call <laughs> call the white diet, which is um, basically white white rice, white bread, chocolate, and a ton of ice cream. Uh, the couple of days running up to an Ironman. Um, how much food do I take on the bike? Um, I have about probably about 300 calories um i actually use mars bars at the start um and then i use high five gels um and um their electrolyte tablets uh kind of further on down the bike ride and then the run i just take uh gels and um electrolyte drink um Another one, Ben McGee, how do you manage so many Ironmans and stay injury free? What's your secret? Um, ben, you obviously <laughs> don't know about my year last year. I basically couldn't run last year other than in races. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm an expert on injuries. Um, I actually, I can't remember how many weeks of running I had up until August, but it was probably less than eight I would say um and then I broke my collarbone um so then all I could do was slow running before uh Kona so um yeah I'm not uh definitely not injury free um I think I learned last year that you if you get a niggle you do need to stop um and I stupidly raced Ironmans without any run training which caused kind of consequent injuries so I'm not injury free and I don't have any secrets. Um, I thought I did when I was getting into it, but that was, I guess, because <laughs> I was lucky. Well, probably because I wasn't training as hard, actually. And I didn't have any sport background, so I haven't had time to get any. Um, Rob died. How do you find balancing a work and being a triathlete? Um, I think I'm lucky in that I've got a job that I love. Um, I love being a doctor. Um it's it is hard actually um trying to juggle the two and yesterday was gloriously sunny and i was working and today was gray and miserable and i had to go out on the bike for four hours but um i think i don't know i'm in interested to see how i do this year um i've juggled them before and done well um i then had two and a half years where I wasn't juggling it, I was just being a triathlete. But actually, it's harder being a full-time pro than people realise. It's um, It can be quite dull. Um, it can be quite lonely. Um, it's hard to keep it fun um, the whole time. We put all the glamorous pictures on Facebook and things, but um, there's a lot, of, a lot of tough times, particularly when you're injured. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, working part-time does have some um, benefits. It does mean that I get a a four day weekend rather than a seven day week as a pro it's kind of all the same but you know now on a wednesday night when i finish work i'm i'm really excited about running my bike and then on a sunday evening i'm actually looking forward to going to work again so um yeah i don't know it's time management and um planning i guess is the most important um <clears throat> barry harris Hi Lucy, how do you develop mental toughness? I seem to find it too easy to just stop and walk on the run when my legs start to scream. How do I get over being wimpish? Um, <laughs> that uh, that's a, a that's a good one. I and mean, I I think one of the main reasons I've got 
as good as I have is actually not because I'm physically particularly talented. Um, I think anyone who saw me do it when I started, like I'm not a natural, I don't have a bit of talent, but I'm not really a natural athlete um, in terms of genetics and things. But I think my head is as tough as anyone's. And I think that I'm um, that's so important. Um, and, you know, we all, we all want to quit, no matter how quick you are. Even Danielle Luif, I'm sure in Kona when she was winning by however many minutes, I'm sure, <laughs> sure she wanted to quit. quit. I think, um, I think it's important to develop it in training. And I think you have to push yourself in training. And I don't mean actually the really hard physical sessions when you're really pumped for it. I think the most important ones are the days where you really don't feel like it and you just can't be bothered um you haven't slept very well maybe you're just doing an easy ride but you just can't be bothered and I think those days are the days that um a bit like my ride today to be honest I'm I'm just tired I need a good night's sleep um and I had to do four and a half hour bike ride and it was grey and windy and I wasn't going hard, I wasn't riding well, but I think because I didn't quit and I got it done, that's another little mental session in the bank. Um, so I think do it in training. And then remember why, uh, you know, in the race, remember how hard you've trained to get there. And if you quit then, in the race, then everything is, um, everything, all the training that you've done in the run-up is kind of wasted. That's what I always think when I get to the last kind of 10k, if you start walking then, that's the hardest part. But if you start walking then, and everything you've done to that point, eight hours, nine hours, 20, 15 hours or whatever, it's all completely pointless because um, it all comes down to that last 10K. So, yeah, practice it in training. Oh, I'm waffling, sorry. Um, Mick Southern, biggest tip on swimming. Oh, God, I hate swimming. I don't, actually, that's a lie. I don't hate swimming, but I struggle with it, and I'm not very good at it. Um, and I have tried a lot. I think the main thing is find groups to swim with. Um, uh, honestly, swimming on, <laughs> swimming on your own is dire, so find some groups um, to swim with. Um, uh, Jenny Page, you're so in inspiring to us. Oh, thank you, that's nice. Yeah, who inspires me? Um, oh, that's easy, actually. One of my university friends... Um, got paralysed in a bike accident uh, a couple of years ago and seeing the way that she's dealt with it and has always put a positive spin on it and her life's been turned upside down but she uh, she actually just had a baby um, but yeah, she's the person that inspires me the most um, what's your top, David Walsh what's your top advice for a first timer to Ironman 70.3 um, join a club, that's my first, my advice to, uh, anyone, um, who's getting into triathlon. Um, so I did my first Ironman as, as I, uh, drunk and dare. <laughs> um, I just got dumped and it got very drunk and, uh, yeah, that's how I ended up doing it. But I did it all on my own. I didn't know anyone who'd done it apart from one friend, um, who I called Ironman Geek, but, um, he was, he became a very good friend. Um, but at the time it was a one-off and then eventually after that I found the courage to join TFN in Nottingham and I thought they'd all be a bunch of geeks and talking about training and heart rate zones and but actually they're just a bunch of um, pissheads so <laughs> um, yeah that was really what got me into triathlon properly um, joining the club uh, so yeah I'd really really recommend that um, and you'll meet all kinds of people from all walks of life all ages all backgrounds um, I think people in triathlon are, are very friendly. Um, any embarrassing or funny moments you've seen or happened to you during an event? That's from Richard Griffiths. Um, yeah, <laughs> I did a race in Ireland um, last year, a challenge Galway, and um, the first off I got sent the wrong way on the bike and the run. Uh, well, actually, first off, they started the swim when only half the pros were in the water. Um, then I got signposted off course on the bike and the run. I, I got blocks. My When I was trying to run out of transition, there was a forklift truck <laughs> blocking the exit. Um, so that was, yeah, that was interesting. Um, 
embarrassing or funny moments. Oh, I did see, I remember in Ironman UK, actually, Dan Hawksworth, sorry, Dan, uh, a few years ago, he was wi winning the race, but he started running down the finish chute one lap too early. Um, so he still had another 10K to go. So that was quite funny. Um, Sabrina Patton. Hi, do you have any particular advice on nutrition during peak training phase? Um, yeah, I think this is something I I have to be really careful with, particularly when I'm working, because um, I um, yeah I I have to be to you know I train both sides of work morning and evenings, and um, actually the last thing I want to do when I get in at eight o'clock at night is get my lunch ready for the next day, but. Um, yeah, I do always do it, so I make sure I take a proper lunch rather than having the hospital crap food. Um, but Pete, on new to any particular advice on nutrition? Um, I think you need to eat a lot, uh, maybe more than people realise. Um, try and eat fairly healthily, but um, I like I use food as treats in training. So if I'm doing a long ride and you know I'm I'm struggling, and I'll I'll definitely. Eat treat myself to something afterwards um i use loads of nut butters um they're like i think they're yeah that's kind of probably calorie dense fairly healthy um and yeah very delicious but um yeah definitely don't uh don't cut out treats because you train hard so i think um treats are part and parcel of that um Kimberly Howard, I'm doing my first Ironman in Chattanooga and I'm scared silly, <laughs> aren't we all? Any advice for a first timer? I'm working surviving cancer at the moment, wow, and healing from a fractured leg, wow. Single mother of three trying to inspire my children, uh, wow, what's your best advice for someone like me? Um, blimey, Kimberly, that sounds like you've got um, a lot on your plate um, and actually it sounds like the 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 biggest thing is signing up for you because um making that commitment must have been um pretty challenging um i think planning is going to be really the most important thing for you um i don't know where you are in your your cancer treatment and things but um you'll need to listen to your body as we all do and um yeah you need to push it but be aware of when too much is too much and i i guess also accept that um you can't do everything and i i you know it's nowhere near like what you are but um where like your life at the moment but i, I i'm realizing that if work is ridiculous um and crazy and busy and i'm stressed then i might have to sack off the evening session so i i think maybe work out the key sessions that you have to do each week and write those down and they're the ones that you you absolutely have to do and then anything else is a bonus and if life gets in the way um don't don't beat yourself up about having to miss stuff um but good luck wow that sounds um sounds incredibly challenging um so good luck and when you cross that finish line it will be amazing um russell williams lucy when you finish wales in less than nine hours <laughs> yeah right will you come back round and encourage those of us taking 13 or 14 hours um, no, I won't come back round, but I will uh, go out, have my fish and chips, and then come back and uh, drink some beer on the finish line um, and cheer you in. So that's the deal. <laughs> um, Martin Coolhurst. Oh, good evening, doctor. At what stage of your medical career did you seriously start training, workload, etc., etc., on behalf of my daughter? Um, I was 26 when I did my first triathlon, so I was a senior house officer. Um, I'd just got dumped by my boyfriend, or broken up with my boyfriend, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, so I was working silly hours at the time in the in the hospital. Um, but I guess I wasn't training seriously then. I was just doing it to get rounds. But um, yeah, so my first triathlon was when I was 26. Joanne Baxus, uh, go-to treat, Snickers, Bounty, uh, Snickers actually on the bike, definitely some kind of chocolate, um, put a bit of an ice cream sucker as well, and um, any excuse if I'm training in the sun, I'll quite often have a, a Magnum at petrol station. 
Um, Philip Cantillon, the running shoes you use for an Ironman event, have they much mileage on them going into that event? Uh, yeah, I've usually done a couple of runs in them at least. Um, I always use Skechers actually, and um, because I know they fit perfectly, then I, I would be happy to wear brand new ones. But um, I've usually done um, at least a few runs, but they're not, they're definitely not worn out. Um, so yeah. Caroline Chopman, the bike's my weakest element. I get a bit scared on big descents, tight bends break too much. Any tips on improving bike skills? P.S. You're amazing. Thanks. Um, so Caroline, I used to be really horrendous. I'm not exaggerating, really horrendous at descending. Uh, to the extent that my friends in Mallorca um, told me uh, that my theme tune for a training camp was Breaks On. There's a song called Breaks On. Um, and I did 70.3 Mallorca a few years ago and I was in the lead at the top of the climb and I was three and a half minutes behind at the bottom of the climb. <laughs> so I was really bad. I used to go around steering. Um, but anyway, I got a friend, Dave McLean, um, cycling friend, and he took me to a car park and he showed me how to corner. And it was the best, probably the most... Uh, the best training session that I've ever done in terms of time saved and uh, time invested. So I, I can't recommend that more highly. Because once you know how to corner, it's it's actually relatively easy and then you can practice it more and more. Um, Greg Irving, has medicine taught you any skills that have helped you in triathlon and vice versa? Um, oh, that's interesting. Um, I definitely think my PhD taught me a lot. Um I, I didn't like my PhD, uh, so that I was working in a lab. Um, I wasn't the same patients. And um, there are remarkable similarities between a PhD and um, training for an Ironman. So a lot of it's very boring. Um, you have to look for the big picture, um, but also focus on the small details. Um, you often go backwards to go forwards. You, learn, you, make, you make mistakes, but you learn from them. Um, yeah, I, I mean, compared to my PhD and, and training for Nightman, they they the mental attributes were were so similar. Um, I think working as oncology just makes me realise how short life is um, and how how important it is to appreciate it. Um, and I was running last night around the ring road in the dark, having left work later than I wanted to, um, kind of begrudging missing the sunny day. And then I just thought of a patient I'd seen who is a keen cyclist who's stuck on the oncology wards, um, not able to ride his bike or do very much. And um, then I kind of started enjoying my run. So I think oncology's it's good to remind you to appreciate the small things. Um, Elma Lamman, so I'm participating in Ironman South Africa in three weeks, been sick past week in bed. Do you think it will throw me back? Just some thoughts. My first time as well, all the way from South Africa. To be honest, some of my best races I've had after being um, ill for a week or so in the run up, um, probably because you're a bit more rested. So I think the main thing is get yourself better um, and it's always better. I know it's hard to believe and I, I'm the worst for it, but it's better to go into a race um, a bit underprepared, uh, but 100% fresh than overtrained. Um, and I think that's why I did so well in Kona this year, uh, despite breaking my collarbone eight weeks before, um, because I definitely wasn't overtrained. <laughs> um Sid Sidowski, hello Sid, uh, you're the smiliest triathlete, you make Outlaw look easy and thank you for encouraging a fat lad on a BMX. Alright, there's no question. Hi Sid. Um, Maura Kolkmeyer, how do you communicate to your family the commitment needed? I've noticed the time and money put into training unintentionally impacts family and friends. Yeah, that's really true. Um, and I think it's hard for non-athletes. Um, I think even, you know, my, my parents are very supportive. My friends are very supportive. Um, but I still think no one really understands what it's like to be a professional athlete. Um, and, and that sleep is really important and eating is really important and that all the little things do make a difference. Um, I, I mean, my, yeah, my family couldn't have been more supportive. And I think when they see me race, um, 
they realize it's taken friends a while to appreciate that I have to fit in training um, around weekends away and things. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that, that they have and I've kept my non-triathlon friends as well. Um, I think it's really important to make sure you do uh, invest time in normal, as in non-triathlon friends, because um, there's more to life than just triathlon. Um, Keith Drummond, Lucy, my 10-year-old is a big fan and wants to be a pro triathlete. What's your best advice for him, please? He's here listening with me. Thanks, Keith. Hello, 10-year-old Keith's son. I don't know your name. Uh, wow, wanting to be a pro triathlete at 10. God, I didn't even know what a triathlon was until I was about 20, 25. Um, what's your best advice? Uh, I think... Um, Oh, I don't know. That's tricky. I think you need to keep it fun. I think that's the most... If you don't keep it fun, then you're never going to do very well. Um, and I've always... Whenever I've taken it too seriously, I've actually slowed down. So, um, yeah, keep it fun. Work hard at school because you want your grades as well. And, um, yeah, enjoy it. That'd be my advice. Um... Lee Phillips, how many miles on average do you run each week? You're a legend. Uh, it's interesting, actually. So last year, I, 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 I mentioned it earlier, I literally hardly ran until August when I broke my collarbone. I, like, quite honestly, I, I did New Zealand off two weeks of run training because of injury. I did South Africa with an injury. I didn't run. I did staffs off two weeks. And then I think I had four or five weeks going up to Ironman UK of probably 40 miles a week. Um, but then running into Kona, I broke my collarbone. Um, so I discovered that I couldn't run fast, but I could run slow. So I did a lot of very, very slow miles. And actually, although I didn't run quite as well as I wanted to in Kona, my running had got very good by doing lots of slow miles. So over the winter, touch wood, I'm not being injured, and I've been running very slowly, um, probably averaging eight minute miles, maybe 50 to 60 miles a week. Um, and actually that's paid off with a half marathon PB. Um, and I, I really do very little speed work. So I think I've realized that consistency works much better than, um, you know, 50 to 60 miles a week. And I've done some bigger weeks, um, Week in, week out is better than doing, um, doing you know, one hero week with a really good track session that then wipes you out forever for, for a couple of weeks. Um, Tatiana, Tatiana, do you have a blog? blog? Uh, yeah, I've got a blog, lucygossage.com. Um, needs updating. Time. Mm, work. Uh, I do need to do a blog. Uh, but I've, there's quite a lot of old stuff on there. Um it's Ethan. I'm 11 year old. 11 years old, and I'm into triathlon. I would like to ask a question. How can you improve your tra transition times? Thank you. Um, I think you need to practice them. Um, I think when you come to a race, remember where your bike is, because I've forgotten where my bike is before. Um, but I think you need to practice it. So get some friends and have little mini races, seeing who can do triathlon, who can do your transitions most quickly. Um, and you can make it quite fun. Uh, Jake Hanbury, how many miles do you do per week in each discipline when training for seventy point three? Oh, I wouldn't know to be honest. I'd have no idea. I don't. I don't really count miles to be honest. Um, Paul Sutton, how does the length of time that a pro tapers for a race differ from an age group athlete? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I know I used to taper too much. So when I was getting into Ironman. When I was a chopper, I'd have a three-week taper, and I'd do literally very little in the two weeks running up to a race. Um, but actually, some of my best races have been off much less tapers. Um, so I always have, I've got my standard taper sorted now. I have Monday off, uh, Tuesday I do a hard bike and a hard swim, but both quite short. Wednesday I do a hard swim, and a, a swim, sorry, an easy swim and a, a hard run, but short. Thursday I do a bike and a swim. Friday I do nothing and Saturday I just do a bit of everything. So that's my, my taper. Um, I don't think you need to do as much tapering as, as people think, actually. But you don't want to be smashed, obviously. But actually some of my best races... Oh, I don't know, I'm not a coach. Um, 
Do you focus, Leon Hayward, do you focus on endurance training or high intensity workouts? Um, bit of both, actually. I, I don't like high intensity stuff, but I always feel really good once I've done it. Um, I, if I could choose between a, um, a 40 minute absolute smash fest or a five hour ride, I'd probably always go for the five hour ride. But I try and mix it up and I definitely think there's a benefit from high intensity workouts, uh, even for Ironman. Andrew Potter, running, swimming or cycling, which do you prefer, which would you be happy to give up? <laughs> I, I'd definitely give up the swimming. Um, running or cycling is a hard one. Running I love because it's so convenient and it's so quick and you can do 45 minutes and feel like you've uh, really, um, you know, done something. Biking... I just love biking because you can go, you know, my favourite session is going out all day with friends in the hills somewhere on a road bike. Um, just got a brand new Simplon bike, so I'm pretty excited about riding those. I haven't ridden them yet. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I could give up either of them. When I can't run, well, to be honest, I'd, I'd probably give up running. I'd probably give up running if I had to choose. Um, Alex Bo, if you had to do another sport, what would it be? Uh, tennis. I used to play a lot of tennis and uh, I love it. Um, Stephen Johansson, my daughter Emily, 10, would like to know how many times a day you train. Um, there is Emily. Uh, on work days, I pretty much always travel, travel, train twice a day, so morning and evening. Uh, on numb work days or triathlon days um it varies i guess it depends how long each session is as well um and emily also wants to know what your top three tips for remaining motivated during training are um i think you have to know why you're doing it and so i always remember why i'm doing it um i think sometimes <laughs> i reward myself with food uh, at the end of a session so you know i'll tell myself right if you do this extra interval then you can have your uh, ice cream later and i think friends do some training with friends as well because that motivates you uh ben thorne what's your favorite ironman location excluding kona and what 70.3 would you recommend um it's tricky. I, I do love Wales and I do love Bolton um, and that's why I'm doing both of those. They're not glamorous locations, but for me, racing in the UK is very special. Um, otherwise, oh, I don't know. Um, I did New Zealand last year and that uh, that was awesome. South Africa. I love South Africa. What 70.3 would you recommend? Oh, uh, if I was doing one in the UK and I was an age group, I'd do Wimble Ball because it's the toughest. Um, Alex Bowker, what colour is the new bike going to be? <laughs> Go and look on my Facebook page, Alex. It's um pretty awesome uh, black stealth simplon. Uh, Andrew Ferguson, do you get the post Ironman blues? How do you cope? I found it hard post Ironman UK last year, back into a few goals for this year now. Um, yeah, that's true, actually. I sometimes do get post Ironman blues. Um, so even after a best race, even after really good races, um, and I guess some of that's physiological, that you're just so tired. I never sleep for a few days. Um, I always try and pack in some treats and, and things that I haven't been able to do. Um, although the week after Lanzarote this year, I swapped into doing an on-call that weekend because I figured I wouldn't be able to train so I may as well work. So I think that, that will definitely be the... I'll definitely get the blues. But... Um, yeah, I think finding some treats and making the most of not having to train and kind of a bit more sleep and late nights and red wine, etc. Um, Bobby Coatesworth, if your body's hurting, do you train through or fix first and miss training? Oh, I think that depends why it's hurting. If it's just hurting because you're tired, then you need to man up and get it done. Um, if it's hurting because you're injured, you need to get it fixed. So, uh, yeah, that's a tricky one to answer. Andrew Ferguson, again, why are you doing it? What's your overriding purpose for triathlon? Um, that So I was interviewed by a, someone writing a sports psychology book recently, and she asked me that question, and I said, because I love it. And she said, you're the only person, professional, that said that, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, so I, yeah, going to Kona last year, um, I'd broken my collarbone eight weeks before, 
and um, my race there meant that I pushed myself and got everything out of myself and I felt like I fulfilled myself in, in t triathlon in terms of finding out how much I can challenge myself but I'm not ready to give up um, because I love it and it's as simple as that um, so yeah <laughs> um, I think that's one thing I've realized actually it's all very well to set yourself goals but you need to be passionate about them um, and if you don't if you're not passionate about something, you'll always resent it. Um, so I wasn't passionate about my PhD and I resented all the all the late nights and weekends that I had to spend doing it. But I am passionate about triathlon and I'm passionate about being a doctor. So I never resent the sacrifices really for that. Um, Lee Mason, do you run in the morning or afternoon? Um, <laughs> but either. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jeremy McLaughlin, how do you overcome cramping up while training or racing? Um, I, I touch wood, I don't seem to have too many problems with cramping, actually. Um, I know people that do, and I don't, uh, you know, they talk about electrolytes and things, but actually cramping's not really been an issue for me. Um, Will Greggy, do you do all white training on the time trial bike? No, I don't. Um, I've actually only ridden, well, I haven't ridden my brand new bike yet, um, but I've only got my old time trial bike out last week. Um, so I, yeah, coming up to races, I do most of it, but I think I, I definitely alternate it with a road bike. Um, and I think there's no harm in doing that at all. In fact, it probably makes you stronger and a more all round uh, rider. Um, Stuart Brown, hi Lucy, my wife's getting fed up of me doing Tembi and would like to go abroad for a race, which would you suggest for a first foreign race? Um, I, oh, I've lost the second part of your question. Um, uh, oh, that's a tricky one. I don't know. It depends how far you want to go. Um, uh, go somewhere that your family wants to go to as well and look at the courses. Um, I'd always go somewhere with a hilly course. <laughs> um, but I, mean, I, I think there's a, a re, you know, I think some of the flat ones, you do get too much drafting. So, um, yeah, Nice is pretty awesome, actually, in Europe. Um, uh, uh, Joanna Ritchie's gels or jelly babies in running uh, gels. Mark Rayner, how much work do you do on flexibility and strength? Um not as much on flexibility maybe as I should do, but I do two gym sessions a week. Um, and I'm trying to be fairly uh, religious about doing those. So they're not hard, they're not heavy weights. It's single kind of body weight, single leg stuff and um, core strength and things like that. Um, but I've touched with it, I think it's really important for injury. Um, Andrew Ferguson, what do you think about when you're on the bike? It's a long time in your own head. Yeah, I was talking about that with a friend today, actually. Um, and there are days on the bike, particularly in training, when when you kind of just get lost in your thoughts and the time flies. And then there's days like today when I was just looking at my clock and I just wanted to be at... Well, I was meeting a friend for a coffee. I just wanted to be in that coffee shop. And I was done with the ride before I'd even started. Um, and I think, yeah, those are the days that, that make you tough and, and strong for the races. Um, actually, in a race, I never very rarely... Well, unless I'm having a really bad day, I don't get bored on the bike because there's quite a lot to think about. Um, firstly, I'm always miles behind after the swim. So it's kind of, you know, try and get back in the race. Then it's remembering to eat, trying to look at power numbers. Are you staying aero? Looking out for friends, trying to work out how time difference is to people and... So, yeah, it's very rare I get bored on bikes. I do sometimes think kind of an hour in, oh, my God, I've got another four hours of that. But, um, yeah. Uh, and I do have little kind of, in a race, I'll think of, um, or I'll, I'll set up before the race little quotes, inspirational, what uh, just kind of motivating things to me, sports, uh, sports psychology stuff, I guess, to keep me um, motivated and remembering why I'm doing it. Um so I find that quite useful as well, um, particularly in Kona, because you're competing on your own. Well, I am, because I'm so, such a bad swimmer for for hours. Um, Steve Bolland, when you don't want to go out and do it, what do you say to, to yourself to make you do it? Um, 
I guess I, I think about why I'm doing it, why, you know, what the big picture is. Um, I think that's that's probably the main thing. Um, and then I remind myself how good I'll feel when it's done. Even if you've not done your session very well, when it's done, if you've been out and you didn't really feel like it, it's pretty satisfying. Um, Andy Kate, doing Bolton for my first time and this year, how best to train for the hills? Um, Bolton's a great course. It's got um, it's got quite a lot of hills, but it's not uh, it's not crazy. Um, I until recently I was living in Cambridge, which doesn't have a lot of hills. Um, so you don't need to ride in hills. I don't think to be good in hills. Um, riding on the flat makes you very strong because you don't get the the freewheeling on the downhills. Um, you can always put your bike in a big gear on the turbo if you um if you you know if you feel like you want to do some hill reps. So um. Yeah, I think practicing descending and cornering is is probably just as important. Uh, James Clark, hi Lucy, what are your key goals for this season? Um, I want to win another Ironman. Um, yeah, and I want to see how how juggling work and training has gone. I think it's I like challenges, and I made life challenging this year. Definitely, um, I'm not going to lie. So I'm kind of intrigued really to see to see how it goes um as much as anything uh tim watson sorry these questions are just being picked at random um what's your top tip for ironman training for people with limited time for longer session have time for two to three hour sessions but difficult to free time for longer sessions um i think uh two to three hour sessions you can you can go a long way with them. Um, you probably need to make them include quite a lot of hard work, particularly on the bike. If, you've, if you're trying to get around an Ironman on three-hour bike rides, I think you're going to need to incorporate a lot of work and, and definitely probably over Ironman intensity for those rides. Um, I think it would be easier if you, if you could at least get two or three six-hour rides in. Um, that would probably make a massive difference. Um, but you can do a lot more than, you know, I got around New Zealand having started running two weeks beforehand. So I shouldn't have been able to run that marathon, but I did. Um, so your body can do a lot more than, than you think, but it will be a lot more pleasant if you can get, I, th I just think the long rides make a difference. Um, if you can double train as well, so you do two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, then that's in another way around it. Um... Mark Halliwell, is there a big step up from doing a half Ironman to a full Ironman distance? Um, yes, <laughs> um, I yes, there is a is a massive difference physiologically, and I, I guess commitment wise in terms of training as well. Um, I think there may you know if you're going to do an Ironman, if you really want to do it, you'll love it. If if you're doing it because you feel you should or because someone else told you that you want to, then you're probably going to resent the sacrifices. So if you if you definitely want to do it, um, then I think all the sacrifices would be worthwhile. But just make sure that you definitely want to do it. Hayley Dan, what do you do the day after racing? Um, if I can, <laughs> I'll go out and get drunk in the evening. Um, usually celebrate or recuperate with... Um, with friends and family um other people it's always nice if there's other people that have raced as well um i'd always do i try and do a little spin for just 45 minutes or something on the bike as well um sorry i'm just turning down the oven uh carl dipionio hi lucy i saw you at 70.3 staffs i did it last year on my road bike i'm doing bolton this year do you recommend i get a track on time trial bike or stick with my road bike and if you have an old one you don't want. Um, uh, I So the, I, there's no doubt that a time trial bike will be faster. But um, I don't think you need to invest in a time trial bike. So I went to Kona as an age grouper on a road bike. And um, I did, I can't remember, three years on a road bike. Um, so you can do reasonably well on a road bike. Um and particularly if you get a good fit, um, I think that's really important. I don't know where you are, but um, 
I'm going to get, that's the reason I haven't ridden my new Simplon actually, because I'm going to get it fitted properly before I ride it uh, with Bridgetown Cycles in Staffordshire. So I don't know if you're local, but they're brilliant. But um, get it fitted with tri bars, and you probably don't need to buy a time trial bike, but um, if you want one, then get one. Uh, Helen Murray. Hello, Helen. Uh, what's your favourite part of Ironman Wales? Oh my God, I love it. Tenby is... The town centre is amazing on the run. Oh, God, it's just unbelievable. I mean, you can't... I just remember running along and, and almost just wanted the crowds to stop just to give me a couple of minutes of peace and quiet. It's, um... Oh, it's it's amazing. Um, yeah, so so the town in... Yeah, the town in Tembe is pretty special. But the swim, to be honest, as well. I don't like swims, but when you run up, you've got a two... I can't remember, a K or something uphill that you run... After the swim through town, everyone's crowd and cheering. Oh, it's amazing. Um, Matt, you hear what's for dinner? Uh, chicken and vegetables. Um, Leon Hayward, what maintenance training do you do post an Ironman race? And when do you get back to build or peak training for your next race? Um, that depends where I am in the season. So um, I've got three, at least three Ironman scheduled this year, touch wood, if I don't get injured. Um... So it depends a bit where I am in the season. So Lanzarote, hopefully I'll just have an easy week and then get, get back onto it. Um, uh, but yeah, you kind of have to listen to your body um, a bit. I, don't, I always need definitely at least one very easy week. Um, Laurie Marshall, this is great, Lucy. <laughs> you why waffle. I'm glad to hear you like to treat yourself after sessions. I just wonder what's the worst injury you've had. And how long it took you to get back to full training. Um, oh, so I guess um, Kona 2014, first pro race, I had an Achilles injury. It'd be long standing, but it flared up just beforehand. And I didn't listen to it. I kept running, doing really hard runs as well. And, and it was just getting worse and worse. So I ended up walking 21 miles in that marathon. Um, so that was bad. And that... That's always that's just a chronic injury now that I I can manage, touch wood. Um, and then the collarbone this year before Kona, um, just because it was <laughs> so dramatic and such bad timing. Um, but yeah, uh, Andrew Ferguson, what's been your biggest emotional moment in the Ironman race and why? Um, oh, that's that's a good one. I think finishing my first Ironman was. Um, was immensely emotional um because i didn't think i could do it uh so that i'd achieved the impossible um i think kona 2015 was very emotional because i'd conquered kona a race that had always kind of really conquered me before and i, I knew that it wasn't my best race but i'd got absolutely everything i could out of myself on the day and then kona this year was I was a wreck after it because because of the collarbone and because of what I've been through in the run up because I was going back to work and um yeah I I was I, I was very emotional full of uh, proud emotional but um I think in floods of tears at the finish so yeah for different reasons um uh, Keith Drummond, Lucy, long and slow sessions in zone two, valuable part of training physiologically to hone body ability to burn fat as fuel. What's your take on long, slow sessions in zone two? Um, yeah, I do them. Um, I think you have to mix them up with short ones. I'm not very scientific with my training, to be honest, but um, I think if you've not got much time, you'd be better off doing intensity. But if you've got time, um, then long, slow sessions are definitely valuable. Um I'm on the Erdinger team and a lot of the Germans do a huge amount of long, slow training, uh, but they do a huge amount of it. So, you know, they'll be doing seven hours a day, which isn't possible for most people. Mark Farquhar, uh, any tips for Ironman Androssi in May? Oh, it's going to be hot, I imagine. Um, it's windy. Uh I think nutrition on the bike is the most critical um, thing. I, I think you yeah start drinking straight after the swim because once you get dehydrated, you won't be able to play catch up. Um, 
don't take the bike too hard. And actually, if it runs really windy, then you're best off running hard into the headwind and easing back on the tailwind because you get the, the cooling effect from the headwind. Um, Linda Mill, what are your goals for the future? Any races you want to do you haven't done yet? Oh, loads, but um, a lot of them aren't triathlons, actually. They're kind of bike adventures and um, some some off-road mountainy stuff. Um, yeah, but that that will be when I'm done with triathlon. So who knows when that will be? Ben Jackson, who are your best friends in triathlon? Oh, <laughs> that's all my all my Cambridge buddies. Um, yeah, well, I was in Cambridge until now, and uh, yeah, my Cambridge buddies were are uh, still pretty special. Um, they know who they are. Um, Cool. Well, I think that's about it. I know there's lots of questions that um, I haven't answered. Sorry, but I <laughs> I need to get some dinner. Um, yeah, thanks for joining me. I hope I haven't waffled too much. And do come and say hello if you see me at the races. Um, and yeah, I'll be at Lanza and all the UK ones. Um, happy training. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>